Hi, I'm Ken Iverson. I'm a storyteller. I've lived in Oregon for about 27 years, and I'm a thief. At least I was once. I got caught stealing. A lot of people get caught stealing at one point or another when they're growing up. Maybe you did too. Taking something that isn't yours does a lot to change your relationship with another person. I started thinking back about the time that I did steal something. And I started remembering where I was living in Woodside, California. And I can just picture it, such a beautiful place. And you can think about places that you've lived, places where different things have happened to you that you'll never forget. My sister Judy and I rode our bikes everywhere. And I can remember one day, we rode from our house up the hill that we lived near and down to a local store where we knew the owner. We went into the store and we were just looking around. We weren't even there to buy anything. It was just a way to get out and do something. And the store owner surprised us by saying, Judy, Kenny, I want to go next door. Would you watch my store for me? It was a little grocery store. We'd never been asked to do something like that, so we said, sure. And If somebody came in, we were supposed to go and get him, and he'd come and take care of them. So Judy and I just wandered around the store, but we separated, and when I started wandering around by myself, I noticed the candy. Have you ever walked by a candy stand when you're checking out, and you look and you really want a candy bar? Well, I saw a candy bar I really wanted. No Henry. And I looked at that, and... I looked around. Judy wasn't anywhere in sight. I reached out and I took that O. Henry candy bar off the, off the counter. And I hurriedly went down an aisle and I opened it up and I started eating it because I knew I'd have to eat it right then because I couldn't take it home because riding home on the bike it would melt and I couldn't let Judy see it. So I kept listening for where she was in the store and I kept going down different aisles trying to avoid her but just as I was eating the last bite of that candy bar, just as I put it in my mouth, Judy's head came around the end of the aisle and she saw me holding the candy bar wrapper and putting that last bite of the candy bar in my mouth. Her eyes got big. She said, I'm gonna tell dad. And she ran out the door. It was just a screen door because it was summertime and I can remember hearing that door just slam shut. <sighs> Sometimes when I'm telling a story or thinking of a story, the sounds start bringing the whole story to life. And I can remember that screen door slamming and her getting on her bike and I can hear her starting to pedal away quickly. Neither of us thought about going and telling the person that owned the store that we were leaving. I ran outside and looked and Judy was riding across the parking lot and headed up the hill toward our house. I got on my bike and I started riding as fast as I could. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I would do even. But I rode and I rode as fast as I could and I caught up to Judy and I caught up to her and without even thinking, I reached out and I pushed and knocked her off her bike. I went flying right past her. She just fell in, in, in some dried grass, so I knew she'd be okay. I wasn't pushing her where she'd get really hurt, but still, I just wanted her off her bike and I went shooting up the hill and down the hill to our house. And I came racing down the hill to where we lived, pulled in, parked my bike and ran up to my dad, who was working in the garage. And I just ran up to him and I said, I didn't do it. My dad looked at me and he knew he was in the middle of a story immediately. Soon Judy arrived and her bike, the handlebars were twisted a little and she was scratched. And my dad looked at me and knew I had done it, whatever it was. He wanted to know and he wasn't happy until I was willing to tell him the whole story that I'd been trusted to watch a store with Judy and I had stolen. And I tried to hide it and then I pushed Judy off her bike, hurting her to try and somehow get back and protest that I was innocent. Dad put me in the car and took me back to the store. I never felt smaller in my life than walking in through that screen door. Here just 15, 20 minutes before I'd come flying out and throwing it open and seemed like a big kid. And I walked in through that door to see the owner of the store as a very little boy who was scared. My dad walked me up to him and said, Kenny has something to say to you. My throat had never been so dry. And I told him I had stolen a candy bar from him and that I was sorry. 
with my dad's coaching. I also volunteered that I was willing to work to pay for the candy bar. I believe he had me sweep the store. What I'll never forget is the look on my dad's face when I told him, I didn't do it. I'll also never forget the look on his face when he watched me tell the owner of the store, I did do it, and I was sorry, and could I make it up to him? It's amazing how one little memory can start growing when you really look at it and think back to when things really happened. I encourage you to think of things in your life that you've never forgotten. Maybe you broke something that was precious to you or something that wasn't yours at all. Maybe you stole something. It can even just be the way we spoke to someone that we will never forget. Any of these things, when we really look at them, can develop into incredible stories with sights and sounds that just make them come alive. I hope you'll really try, looking back at your stories, tell them to each other, tell them across the table, and watch them grow and come alive for you. Have fun. <laughs>